so today this, the subject here with uh, uh, our Pen Pharma presentation is about contained manufacturing and packaging with a difference. So I will try to explain you about um, the trends around high containment, high containment approach uh, and high containment um, outsourcing, outsourcing uh, challenges. So first of all, uh, speaking about the definition of highly potent products, which is key at the beginning when you evaluate your product, when you evaluate your outsourcing needs. So traditionally compounds with an occupational exposure limit, an OER level below 10 microgram per cubic meter. Um, I would say when you see um, on a marketplace the different kind of categorization you have, um, you may think about the four band categories like SafeBridge, for example, five band categories like with Affigility, other internal companies uh, using five up to six bands categories. So sometimes it's a bit difficult to understand uh, the level of uh, activity of a, of a product. So, and we, we prefer to speak about OEL to categorize the activity of your product. So some typical examples of highly potent solid dose um, is oncology products, cytostatic, cytotoxic, immu immu uh, immunomodulatory drugs products, immunosuppressants, uh, antivirals, opioid-based analgesics, uh, and as well, some few other potent products, most of the time with hazardous or irritant products. So, and if we come back um, on the marketplace, in terms of facts and trends, so currently what we see, um, the current trends towards the development of more specific uh, compounds, and then therefore highly potent drugs, is really increasing in the pipeline of all pharmaceutical companies. When you take the, the full pipeline worldwide, you see that 25% of drugs currently in development worldwide are classified as highly potent API, so HP API. And it's a very fast growing uh, market with an, an annual growth rate of the 9% for the next five years. So clearly when you see this dynamic and um, the potential needs uh, for the companies, when you see the size of the companies which are developing these kind of pipelines and the potential needs of manufacturing, it's clearly striking because 45% of oncological companies worldwide are small and innovative companies. So means do not have, most of the time, the capabilities to manufacture such, such compounds. 90% of privately owned oncology companies are small and virtual companies as well. So outsourcing and finding the right partner for such uh, highly potent products is clearly a need in the next few years. But there are some few key challenges around these. Um, it's first to fulfill demand in a competitive arena um, where the capacity is really limited. And when, you, again, you go down to selecting the right side, the right health and safety approach, so selecting the right CMO who has the right infrastructure and the right technology advancement, it's even more difficult. So around this, you have some few processing challenges. And before outsourcing your high potent API and manufacturing solid dose is to be evaluated um, with um, your outsourcing request. First is compound safety evaluation and OELs. We first, as in PAN, an internal safety calculation, which is key to demonstrate the um, safety of a product across the whole process. And first, an external official safety evaluation report. Secondly, an equipment and process containment assessment of the equipment to fit with your OEL approach. is not fitting only with the theoretical data, data, but as well to assess your own uh, performance of the full train of equipment you have. And we do that with micronized surrogates to demonstrate the levels. And last but not least, the global compliance, because most of the time, these kind of products need a global compliance for all different markets, going through local MHRA, FDA, and Visa, EMA, and Japan. At the end of the day, the ultimate goal and aim is to ensure alignment between the molecule potency and the manufacturing site capabilities. How many times we have seen some customers coming uh, to some third parties 
uh, and with an assessment. And at the end of the day, when you start uh, developing the product, the assessment was not really done and uh, the tox data not matching the equipment capabilities you have. Now, speaking about the processing trends, there are clear new trends across the board. Uh, and the standard approach in the past year that everybody knows was about relying on personal protective equipments, uh, PPEs, where you are in a Kofsmono suit uh, to handle uh, those uh, highly potent products. Now the new trends and pens have fully designed a concept to use entirely a contained processing uh, process to minimize the need of personal protection. Basically, across the whole chain of equipments from early stage weighing until uh, the bulk manufacturing, the process is fully contained. And based on that, you do not need any more personal protection. So this new design philosophy trends is no PP as a first barrier between operator and HP API. So again, this is a new trend, and we see some few customers now moving forward to this um, uh, specific philosophy with internal uh, definition. And why? It's just because you avoid uh, the accidents on such a uh, highly potent product. So this new approach is done thanks to, first of all, following the recent engineering evolutions. So there was significant new evolution in engineering design of the equipment, which are able now to process products down to a very low OEL, so down to 0.01 microgram per cubic meter, which is quite aggressive. Uh, this allows as well to eliminate any PPE needs for routine, means that at the end of the day, PPE are used only as the last barrier when you have uh, specific interventions or maintenance. So as a summary, as you can see, as a summary, is completely the reverse, is the level one of containment is the equipment itself. The second level is negative pressure rooms with a single pass air system. Level three is facility segregation. And then, as I said before, the last level as a backup is PPE. So that's clearly the pen solution, how we have designed this new facility. So it's, let's say, a facility within the facility, fully dedicated to high potent products, development and manufacturing. So we had clearly a vision. So that's the why it's contained manufacturing with a difference. It's completely different and quite unique, especially in the CDMO world. Uh, so we had a vision investment which has delivered this purpose-built facility and we just have been awarded uh, by ISP as the best facility in the world this year uh, for this specific facility. So at the end of the day, how we want to position this facility is uh, the facility of reference uh, for outsourcing of highly potent uh, solid dose products. As a summary, um, about the facility design and principles. First of all, as, a, as we are a CDMO, is multiple compounds. We need a lot of flexibility, even if we are on the market of highly potent products. Um, so we can run, at the same time, multiple compounds in the different rooms at different stages. So you may imagine to have a product uh, under the weighing stage in the isolator, then at the compressing stage, another one in granulation, and so on. So we can have multiple compounds at the same time. It's not a dedicated room where we can have only one API at a time. One of the key factors was OEL, OEL down to 0.01 microgram per cubic meter, of course, uh, per eight hours. So it means that we can handle most of the uh, toxic compounds down to also cytotoxic products. In terms of size, it was really important also to have flexibility around the size. So we have designed the site with equipment who are able to match very small scale, from one to 10 kilos, but as well larger scale, from let's say 20 to 100, 120 kilos, and having ze geometric scale-up capabilities. Fully segregated people and material flows, fully automatic cleaning procedures, so we'll come back on that, viewing gallery. So again, it's important that our facility would be customer friendly because most of the time, uh, highly potent uh, sites for contract manufacturing are kind of black box and so on. 
Here you have viewing gallery, so you can follow up your product. And in the areas where you don't have, you have uh, videos and so on, live videos to, to follow either your development or your manufacturing of commercial products. Uh, then single pass airflow on all the critical booths. Uh, small and large scale packaging, and I will come back on that as well. Um, and fully designed to meet any inter international uh, standards. So Europe, US, uh, South America, Vivan Visa, and Japan. So about safety and GMP principles. So what is key is not only claiming about 0.01 microgram per cubic meter, but how do we control that? So it went through a very detailed selection of equipment using sterile biotech standards and best practices. And the basic concept is each machine is a clean room in its own right. So that is the unique concept here. And any APIs are transferred via containment valves. Because as you know, any transfer is the weak point uh, across your processes. And this is done through containment valves standardized across all the process and as well RTP ports. And we have also full fail uh, safe systems. So what is important again when you design such a, a facility is to have no weak points which may destroy completely your target. So again, safety and GMP principle, how do you manage cross-contamination risks? So first of all, each machine is at a relative negative pressure. When we say each machine again, is all the train of equipment. Single passer, HVAC system on top of this. So as you understand, is fully contained. So single passer would not be mandatory compared to other standard high potent facilities. But again, belt and braces approach uh, to have the right uh, approach is fully single passer. Terminal air pass filters, rooms at relative negative pressure to corridor, of course. Air locks in rooms at higher risk for FMEA fully separate and dedicated utilities. And then also what was critical is all the cleaning place or waiting place and wash off line. So you have this kind of combination across the board according to the type of equipment. The valves, again, really critical and IBCs. Again, in order to speed up the process and to enhance uh, flexibility as well, so we use a lot of disposable technology, especially at early stage for development. And um, we have also a fully independent SMEPAC testing, so to confirm on a regular basis those uh, 0.01 microgram per cubic meter. So, and the guidance for philosophy, and uh, so we used all the key critical guidance, so with ISP risk map, uh, about cross-contamination, ISP cleaning guide standards, uh, EMEA as well concept paper for the shared facilities for toxic products. Um, and as well, what is key for us is when customers come in with their tox data, we have our own internal evaluation. And um, every product which is introduced goes through what we call the PENS operational potent standards, which is POPS, POPS review, to clearly assess from our end and with an external consultant on top of this, uh, the toxicity of a product and uh, the exposure levels across the whole process. And then at the end, we have created a, what we call a potent passport, which is issued to allow the API safe travel across all the process across our facility. So in terms of equipment, so basically that's the train of equipment we have with an additional one I will allude in a few minutes. So first of all, the isolator, so for transfer and dis dispensing. Then what we have, as I explained to you just before, so we have two scale of equipments. So for small scale, and clearly we call it small scale because it can be used for development, but also for GMP clinical, so it's really small scale, but fully GMP. It's an in-wall system where you have the wet granulation, fluid bed drying, and then comil, and you, you have uh, your bulk uh, product. And then you have the same kind of equipment, but at a larger scale. So again, in an independent room with the high shear mixing and then the fluid bed drying. Then we have another room for milling and blending, quite classical. Then encapsulation. So here we have a uh, 
a brand new state-of-the-art machine uh, for encapsulation. That was the, the first real commercial high potent uh, machine which was implemented. So this machine is quite interesting because of course it's fully contained, but you can do standard powder filling, but you can do also pellets filling, mini tabs filling, but also combination products. So you can mix high potent beads, pellets, um, uh, tablets, and so on. So it's a really uh, flexible uh, machine for uh, bulk encapsulation. Then tableting, again, uh, fully contained, so quite flexible, um, with uh, an interesting concept where the containment, as you see here, it's a kind of isolator around the manufacturing. And here is just a cassette which encapsulating all the punches system and your turret. And then last step is the coating. So we have a large one and a small one. So a small one in the same room than the small scale. So for coating, fully contained as well. So again, all across the board, as you understood, all the processes are fully contained with clean in place, wet in place, or wash off line capabilities across, across the board. Scale, one to 120 kilos. And again, what is important and was key is geometric scale up. Because again, sometimes you can find partners who are able to make some small scale, non-GMP or limited scale or only large scale. What we wanted is to speed up uh, uh, product to market. So how we designed the facility is having exactly the same equipment at small scale than at large scale. Same suppliers, just the, just the size. So exactly the same technology. So you avoid many risks of scaling up uh, failures. So then we use uh, rigid IBCs with different sizes. So it's exactly the same, same angles. And then you use them at small scale in the small scale area and at large scale in the large scale area. At the end of the day, what is important is all those equipments are able to reach this level. One last thing, as I told you, which is quite brand new, in, thanks to the success of all the strain of equipments, there was one missing technology we wanted. But again, as you understand, we have very strong guidelines, health and safety guidelines here. Um, we were looking for a roller compactor, because dry granulation is not appearing yet on this slide. But that's things that we will have now, starting from next year, uh, again, fully contained in the same principle that what you see here. So as a summary for the full pen offering, so what we are able to do is formulation development. So from scratch, just bring the OIPI and we do the compatibility studies, the formulation development. Then analytical services, so full testing, development of analytical, stability, so any kind of conditions. Clinical trial supply, packaging and labeling, so I'll come back on that at a later stage on the next slide. Full storage and distribution and QP release services. So including all your scale-up activities, as you understood, for uh, a full service offer. So we can focus only on this early stage or the whole range of services. So it means at the end of the day, we can have a molecule to market approach from early preclinical up to commercial. And we can assist you at the, uh, all levels, either for development, manufacturing, and packaging. And then last uh, but not least, so one important milestone for us as well, as you may have heard about, and uh, you see in our logo, so we have been um, uh, recently acquired by PCI, which opened a lot of uh, additional uh, opportunities within the packaging coordinators group, um, and especially about potent packaging. So you have seen I spoke a lot about uh, development and manufacturing of highly potent products. Uh, but what is key as well, and you see a, a strong trend as well about uh, high potent packaging, where before packaging was, OK, let's move on and more focused on, on the manufacturing itself, uh, which at some point makes sense about risk assessment. But regulatory is really ex um, changing now. And we can offer really uh, um, interesting services now. Uh, and I have my colleague as well uh, in, in the room who, who may uh, answer some of your questions afterwards around the packaging. So, so we have OEL categorized packaging solutions. 
So either in blisters, you know, cold formed, thermoformed, bottling, and uh, these, either in EU, so we have a strong EU footprint, but as well a strong uh, US footprint, um, which is quite interesting because as well, uh, when we were pen as a standalone company, we had only a UK-based uh, footprint, so it enlarged a lot of possibilities. Uh, so we can work on primary, secondary packaging for tr uh, clinical trials, so labeling and so on, um, and also commercial. For clinical as well, so it's not much detailed because that was not the main focus, but again, all what you need in terms of labeling, distribution, uh, if you need depots and so on, so we have a fully integrated uh, service around these. Uh, either for your uh, high potent or standard products. And then services to uh, support broad range of delivery forms. So as you can see on the picture, it's for solid dose, but also any kind of services. So that's it for the moment. And we just have five minutes for questions, if you have any. So if you don't have any questions, also we are just there. And there's a drink uh, with some fizzy stuff. So. Uh, you are all welcome uh, because you were really patient for those 25 minutes. Uh, so you can have a drink there and uh, we can continue to discuss about uh, high potent consideration or others. Thank you very much.